I was hired by a very wealthy billionaire who invested a considerable amount of money into the construction of his very own telescope. Now, I'm not talking about your generic backyard telescope. This one may be James Webb Space Telescope, look like a child's play toy. You could see up to several billion light years away with full clarity. Heck, you could spot a single quarter onto the surface of the moon if you had to. This telescope was a technological marvel that must have required a significant amount of funding and resources. You could actually zoom into specific star systems within the galaxy. They launched several space telescopes in order to get a full picture of all around our orbit. It was practically the wet dream of an astrophysicist. Luckily for me, I was lucky enough to get into MIT and work in several laboratories with highly credible researchers. I graduated with over 20 publications and I got offered a paid PhD position that skyrocketed my career. I was sought out by NASA and as much as I really, really wanted to be with them, the pay was pretty much garbage and they were pretty underfunded. So, being hired and given free reign of an entire telescope, it was an automatic yes for me. The makeup of my team is pretty irrelevant, but it consisted of five other members that were not as equally qualified as me. My first couple of days analyzing the night skies were pretty exciting, almost exhilarating. I recorded hundreds of galaxies and wormholes that weren't discovered yet. There was one specific galaxy though that had caught my eye. It was located behind the Canis Major Dwarf, obstructed by the light of our closest neighbor. It had the appearance of a massive galaxy similar to the Milky Way, yet its solar systems were becoming misaligned. It was as if the galaxy's gravity that contained its systems had started weakening causing thousands of galaxies to start scattering into the void of space. Out of curiosity, I started recording and analyzing the different solar systems within the galaxy. I managed to record five solar systems with habitable planets for future purposes. I couldn't think of a suitable name for the newfound galaxy, so I decided to leave it for another time. I had too much on my plate with presentations, data checking, and publications. And besides, I had too many names to name my galaxy. I was stuck between choosing a Greek, Roman, or even naming it after yours truly. I saved the files and went back to working on my other projects. It must have been a full week before I was able to go back to accessing the telescope. In between that time, I decided to name my newfound galaxy the Montalvo Star System. Upon returning to the telescope, however, I noticed some major abnormalities. Within my entire career, it was something I never saw nor heard of. What was once the Montalvo star system was reduced to a mere clusters of scattered solar systems. At first, 
I thought that I was looking at a different galaxy altogether. Perhaps it even got swallowed by a nearby wormhole. But the one planet I had recorded as a habitable planet, it was still there. I still didn't understand where the rest of these systems had gone. I even compared past photos that I had took of the entire galaxy. Within a week, entire solar systems had disappeared. I decided to zoom in on the remaining systems to examine them. The first three seemed uneventful. Just a couple of planets rotating around their corresponding star. However, the fourth one, it had something a little special. A type O star, one of the rarest stars known to man. These blue stars are so bright that they can be seen at great distances, and some could even be seen on Earth with the naked eye. They have such a mass that when they die, they end in such violent supernova explosions that they can lead to black holes or even neutron stars. Most stars just fade into oblivion. I was so in awe at this beautiful star that I almost missed the giant object traveling through an odd angle. It looked like it was going against the standard gravity of the star system and headed to a planet the size of Jupiter. It was horrifying. It was about the size of our sun. At first, I thought it was some sort of misaligned dwarf planet given the strange movement and velocity as it circled around the planet. But the closer that I looked at it, the more organic it looked. It had large appendages, what I assume would be tentacles that wiggled everywhere, and it moved its body in a swaying motion like a whale swimming. I was left in complete bewilderment at the images that I was seeing. To my knowledge, there were no organisms that could live indefinitely in the vacuum of space. Even the microscopic tardigrades could only live approximately 10 days before the radiation kills them. What I was seeing would revolutionize the biology field. My name, it would be synonymous with the exploration of extraterritorial organisms. I zoomed in to get a closer look and could see that it opened some sort of flap and started releasing bigger tentacles from what I assumed to be its mouth. It started penetrating the planet and I'm assuming it must have started absorbing the planet for nutrients. I'm not sure how its digestive system worked, but it must have somehow evolved to break down every possible element to sustain itself. It took a matter of hours, but soon enough, the planet it was reduced to nothing as it was devoured by the gigantic titan. In only a couple of days, the titan devoured the rest of the solar system, including the sun. Its act of eating the sun was fascinating. It must have produced some strange liquid component that it used to extinguish the flames of the fiery star. Its body, it must have adapted to the incredulous amounts of radiation to be able to withstand the temperatures of any star at such a close range. 
when the star dimmed, I tried to locate the beast, but I had lost it in the void. Instead, I located the nearest solar system I deemed as Marana. The solar system wouldn't have caused me to blink an eye. It looked pretty ordinary. One star with five circulating planets. It wasn't until I saw several lights on the planet's surface that it caught my eye. It was the fourth planet away from its star that had several lights in a grid-like pattern similar to that of Earth when seen from a distance. It couldn't be, but it was. This mysterious planet had some semblance of a very advanced alien civilization. I was getting ready to jot down some more notes when I noticed something very peculiar. A sudden bombardment of smaller lights started leaving the planet's surface in a very organized pattern. It was like they were sending out ships. Thousands and thousands of very little dots, from my angle, started making a protective stance around their home planet. I watched in fascination as they merely circulated around their planet. It was like they were ready for something. I waited for a couple of hours, when all of a sudden, some weird portal opened up in the middle of Marana. It's difficult to describe, but between the edge of the Marana solar system and the fifth planet, a hole similar to the shape of when water drains opened up releasing small bits of what I could describe as pure plasmic energy. This time, two of the titans I encountered earlier emerged from the hole. I'm pretty sure that one of them was the same one that had devoured the solar system from before, but it brought along a smaller titan. I assumed that it must have been its offspring, but it raised further questions as to how that was even possible. Could it be that it reproduced asexually? How does it create those wormholes? I had so many questions circulate in my brain, but I was cut short by the events that started unfolding right in front of me. The smaller beast headed towards the fifth planet, while the larger beast moved towards the fourth planet. The alien ships must have tried firing every weapon they had, because flashes of light erupted all around the vicinity of the great beast. But I watched in mere horror, as the titan nearly waddled through the formation of ships like nothing. Instead, I saw the tentacles shoot off random projectiles, that took some of them down, like they were sentient themselves. The beast itself hovered over their planet and began releasing its large tentacles that must have penetrated deep within the planet. It only took a couple of hours for the entire ordeal to be over. It sent a chill down my spine. How could an entire civilization had been wiped out by one organism so giant, it didn't even acknowledge the billions of lives that it took. The idea that such a beast came into existence sent a dreadful feeling to my core, but I had to know more about it. So I continued to monitor that sector of space. I didn't leave the observatory for weeks getting to the point where my other co-workers started to complain about the smell. I had too much to do and not enough time. The updates that I kept sending over was nothing exciting. New galaxies that were discovered here and there, but I didn't send them anything groundbreaking yet. I kept that stuff to myself, for now. 
It had taken another couple of days for the beast to devour the Marana solar system, and as soon as its star went dark, I lost them to the void. They resurfaced in the nearest star system once again, this time bringing a third. This went on for another month. Each time a solar system would be completely devoured in a matter of days. When the stars went dark, they would use some sort of wormhole opening to pop up in a new star system and to bring in another one. They always traveled in three, and when they reached their capacity, they would send off the fourth one by themselves. As it dreadful as it was to witness such acts, it paled in comparison to what I had discovered. I noticed that the path they were moving through was headed in our direction. When you consider the fact that the light that was reaching from their destination was about 30,000 light years away, the entire galaxy must have been devoured a long time ago. I was simply looking into the echoes of a violent past showing us our imminent future. Based on my calculations, which I had to take into account their exponential growth and the fact that they travel faster than anything we could ever think of, I estimate it'll be another year before the other scientists notice that the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy will start to go dark. In two years, they'll have wiped out half the solar system within our reach. In three years, they'll hit our solar system. We don't have much time before our planet becomes another victim to the horrors of space. The progress and advancement of our technology isn't rapid enough to escape our inescapable fate. I decided to compile a full briefing towards the government space agency to raise alarms as to what I had discovered, but I had my credentials wiped and fired. Heck, they even threatened me with imprisonment if I spoke about it with anyone. However, the truth must be out there. They are coming, and they don't care about anything but quelling their hunger.